What's up guys, Ben here bringing you another video today and I'm really happy to finally get this one on the books and out for you guys. We finally have the final two rosters in the CDL. Uh, they've come out sort of in a leaked form. So let's talk about them, see where they sort of rank amongst the, uh, the rest of the teams and sort of give my final thoughts sort of how all 12 teams stand. Let's dive into this video and get into it. All right, so the first team we're gonna talk about is the London Royal Ravens. Now at the beginning of Roster Mania, sort of the thought was, okay, they're gonna run it back with a version of the squad that they had last year with Afro probably moving on to a better, sort of another kind of tier above team. Um, so they're gonna have to replace him and the thought process is, okay, Paul X comes in for him, nasty and gives more kind of your sub players. Or maybe Paul kind of runs a sub for a little bit, but it seems that as Roster Mania went on and sort of this situation hadn't yes, necessarily resolved itself, from my understanding, Understanding that was because sort of the Paul X buyout conversation was taking a minute. London started thinking and trying to figure out what they wanted to do. And it became clear that with ASIM sort of on the sidelines at LAG, with uh, LAG deciding to go forward with the with the roster that they finished the season with last year, minus Slasher went off to Atlanta Phase. And with Alec, aka R season coming over from Phase, ASIM was available. So London pulled the trigger on that one, got him. So London is running a lineup uh, to start the season of Paul X, ASIM is zero and nasty. A little bit of an interesting story. Well, let's take a look at the stats and dive in. So look, so I think my first thought, you know, with London is definitely this is a surprising result for me in roster mini. If you told me that sort of this would be a fully kind of mixed roster with two NA players and two EU players, I thought it might be sort of a three and one thing with Paul being the only NA player, but ASIM kind of falling into their lap is sort of makes a little bit of a unique situation. I think for London, their biggest struggles last year was closing out series and playing well at land. Especially at the end of the year, they would go up 2-0, they couldn't win a control in stage four, they would fall short, same problem a little bit at champs and then they would get reverse swapped and then when they went to land you had sort of this nasty and gizmo dynamic where gizmo was really good online then he got to land and the numbers fell off whereas nasty wasn't as hot online but he got to land and he was definitely a little bit better do so you think okay so logically for uh london kind of keep developing the young players on this team which in this case is pretty much nasty at this point and for paul who i think still definitely uh has a little bit to go to really round out sort of the rest of his soft skills as a player getting this team a little bit more edge about them in land is sort of probably a priority I would have focused on with this roster in the offseason. Look, they're not going to have as much talent as say an Atlanta phase or an optics. So they need to beat them with composure on land, really solid s and gameplay, and just kind of always be sort of playing with a chip on their shoulder and bringing the best version of themselves when they play quality opposition, which by the way, would London struggle with last year, right? So they would play teams around their skill level and they would do pretty well. But when they faced off against a phase or an optic or a thieves, sort of that really wasn't there. So, okay. What have they done here? So ASIM's pretty much uh, as much of a true sub that exists. He's going to be really good at taking long routes on this team, playing around the hill. Like you're not going to really worry about someone taking those routes. I think Nasty also has that capability uh, about him. And I'm curious to see this ASIM and Nasty dynamic. Look, it's not the most amazing star power SMG duo on planet Earth, but there's actually a little bit of uh, interesting chemistry here potentially. And I also think like a lot of really good decision-making potentially between ASIM and Nasty if they sort of develop that chemistry. So I'm looking at that. And on the flip side, if you look at sort of your AR duo, right, assuming we have sort of a two and two sort of split here, although it seems like early on in the beta, the ARs feel pretty good. So we'll see how that kind of looks in the final build of the game when it releases in October. I really like sort of this Paul X Zero AR duo. Uh, I know Paul on land kind of struggled a little bit at the end of last season, but there's some stuff going on with New York. I'm, I don't think that was the most healthy team situation, but we know where Paul's ceiling's at. We know where Trey Zero ceiling is at. Like this could be a very capable kind of backline for this London team. And it gives Trey, I think, a, a really good playmaking partner who can really go off. And Trey can focus on you know, really gap filling the major lanes as an AR and kind of commanding the troops. You kind of actually have it on both ends, right? Because Asim can also kind of in-game lead sort of a frontline player. And you got Trey doing it from the back line. So I like where communication sort of at with this team. It definitely, to me, I think potential weaknesses is look, I, I think the R point kind of slaying power might take a little bit to round out on this team. As well as I think if we take a look at the stats here, you know, one of Nasty's weakest game modes last season was S and D. He really, really struggled with the game of pretty much all season. So want to see him improve uh, and see if they can get him a little bit more confidence because you like ASIM players like ASIM and Paul X and Trey, uh, AK Zero, sort of get those picks and really kind of play both ways in s &D, whether they're going to play aggressive and just kind of hit stuff as a team or play for picks and see him on defense, run your defaults or play more aggressive. I think figuring out how to round out nasty skill set and search would be really good for this team. Now, I know London was also, and we talked about it earlier in the video, they also really struggled at control last season. I wouldn't say that this is a great control team on paper, but they might kind of get lucky because it doesn't seem like control is going to be the third game mode this year at least at the moment so if we get like 
no third game mode or a CTF. This team could be very interesting. Really like the only person on this team who's really played CTF at the high level competitive level is Zero. So not really much to say about this team uh, on that game mode, but I think you like some of the potential there, right? Especially a player like Asim, who's been really smart about taking routes. And I think like players like Nasu can do a really good job in getting map control and really manipulating spawns in CTF. Cause that's the biggest thing in that game mode is just setting up situations where you get three or four dead and get that flag out and just make sure you're covering. So obviously again, assume that CTF the third game mode. I don't even think that's remotely close to lock. That's just sort of conjecture at this point. Look, my overall thoughts on this London squad is I think there's probably a little bit of more leadership on this team than last year. I think it's about the same ceiling though. I think this team's ceiling is top four. I think their floor is definitely qualifying for champs. I think they're a little bit better than say Florida or Paris on paper, but I will say for me with this team, and I think the, the thing that will kind of determine their floor to ceiling is the development of players like Nasty and Paul X really running out to be like top stars in the league. I would say Paul more than Nasty has it, although Nasty could take a big step up in his sort of second season, as well as sort of the only thing I haven't talked about at this point is AC and Zero are great players, but they are a little bit inconsistent. So again, I need to see the better side of them consistently because they both had points throughout last year where they were a little bit down in form. And I know it's a little bit of a difficult situation. Zero's talked about it uh, when they had to deal with Gizmo being out and Harry coming in that there was a little bit of a role issue. And listen, I watch Asim play on the LEG team and I would be losing full if he was with the way that his team was playing on the minimap and he was having to fill gaps. It's not that easy to play that way. So a good London team. I like the moves. The thing I've heard about this London team, if we go back to this article, is they did try to take a crack at Wardy, uh, who is a very um, sort of high stock player coming out of challengers from last season but he went off to new york to be their sub i've heard that london might pick up scraps as their sub so that's a pretty intriguing potential option coming off the bench for this team we know what maddie can bring i mean he was a top level pro for a long time him asim and zero have also teamed together before uh, on phase in black ops 4 and obviously trey and maddie teamed on other teams before that so one to watch i think with scraps is more of a longer tail thing uh he's got to go back to the u.s and get settled i think probably start off there in challengers but i've heard some good things about maddie i've heard that he's switching to a scuff he was playing like full default for most of his career. So he's basically like kind of playing with one hand behind his back if you think about it. Uh, I think he can definitely become a quality player uh, at the CDL level again if he gets an opportunity. So curious to see what happens with this London situation. All right, let's talk about Paris Legion. Finally, after y'all coming to my chat, commenting on YouTube, what's this team? Who's teaming with Donnie? Is Clay going to this team? Uh, we finally got the roster. It looks like Venom and Capsule were considered, uh, but they went with more of a veteran approach to this team. So it's looking like they will start the season with Temp, Playster, Prolute, and TJ Halley. So this team was kind of, this is sort of the rumored for for a couple of weeks. It looks like those sort of contracts are getting close to agreed, at least for this article from Jacob Hale, and they are running with the squad. Let's kind of talk a little bit about out sort of the skill level on this team. So let's talk about the good. I really like this potential AR duo um, with, with Donnie running the flex between Clay and Temp. I think like there's a lot of skill there. And look, I know Clay didn't have a good season last season. The stats are definitely not on the good side for clay but we know what his ceiling is he's won rings he's won events he's been a top five player in the game before like he can turn back that clock in that way and i feel like especially the way this game plays in the beta if clay the thing with clay is it's always about how engaged is he is the environment around him good if he's focused and grinding and coming on day and, and loving the game you're going to get the best version of clay and the same thing with temp as well if these guys can figure out the leadership on this team and, and figure out sort of the vibes as an ar duo they're probably up there actually surprising with some of the better AR duos in the league. Where I think this team's weaknesses and probably where potentially they will make roster changes down the line is this sub duo of TJ and Prolude. I don't think either of these players is, you know, bad or not league capable. I just think the problem for this Harris team is if you compare them to the other sub duos in the league. For example, we just talked about Asim and Nasty. I don't know if I would take TJ and Prolude over Asim and Nasty from a pure what is the ceiling to floor standpoint. Look, TJ's been a longtime veteran player, but he's another player uh, that's been very inconsistent and when he plays better opposition, especially during the CDL era, has really struggled and is on multiple teams. I think Byron aka Prolute had a pretty good start on the Optic team, but uh, once they got to land and then after that first land, like his stats fell off. I think also for Prolute, I feel like last year he played better with an AR than he would with a sub. So I'm a little bit curious to see in this game how he works as more of a sort of second sub type on the team, at least how I think the roles will go down. So for Paris, I, I know, look, there are a lot of potential options they were looking at and a lot of the better players kind of got taken and look, Paris is probably 
probably spending a decent amount of coin to make Donnie and Clay happy. So they're not gonna have a lot of money potentially to allocate based on the way they usually conduct business for sub spots. So I can see that they're you know, getting better skilled players is definitely tricky for them. Uh, but I do not, I do not have 100% confidence that Prolet and TJ Halley are going to either both or one finish the season on Paris. I think this team could get really good with like maybe one change. And you could probably build a decent team. Like say if it was Clay, Donnie and TJ and they can find like a really good sub in challengers if Byron doesn't work out. This team could be a decent top eight team. I think for me, the big thing with this squad is getting ahead early. We know the first event's coming up in December. If this team can get on and grind early and be a surprise package at the first event, it's momentum they can carry on throughout the season. If this seems starts slow they get like a top 12 placing top 10 placing like the vibes are going to be bad from the start and i can see this like every other season for paris which is by the time major three rolls around the season's over uh they need to have a hot start in order to carry the momentum or it's going to be the same old story with this team i will say though one potential sort of pathway for this team is if any squad's going to go for the two three five path i.e uh being a better s d team in the league like this one might do it because i actually think that these players are pretty solid at search they can play both ways they can play aggressive or they can play a little bit slower pick style um so i like that potentially as a path here because i don't know if the squad's going to be some like killer respawn team but again for paris start early get ahead in the meta carry that momentum last season was like the season before the season before that it wasn't good i could go pull up the stats for y'all and show you by game mode it's it's not pretty for paris but i will say my final thoughts is this is the better version of all of the paris teams that we've seen over the years it seems like they're starting to kind of build something here and i think they're probably a change or two away from being like a really good team uh but it's starting to take the right steps as an organization so let's see what they can do throughout the season but we'll see if this team can qualify for champs they're on the outside for me right now but a roster change or two or a really good start can really change that uh, horizon. So you never know. So yeah, that's my summary on it. Uh, final thoughts, London, pretty solid squad. Went in an interesting direction. Did not foresee them picking up ASIM. Definitely London again could be a real surprise package. And for Paris, making some decent moves. They're going to bring in Clayster. That's huge. I think him and Temp uh, got to figure out their chemistry. So it's not, you know, it's a really good sort of uh, environment for that team to practice. And they can, get a get, they can get ahead early. They could be a real surprise team and maybe make some waves early on the season. And if not, it's going to be, again, one of those pair of squads where we're just like, you know, they're they're just kind of there to play COD, basically. And let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you agree with those assessments? Do you think maybe uh, these teams are a little bit better than I projected? Do you think they're a little bit worse than I projected? Curious what y'all's thoughts are. Make sure you comment and I'll uh, respond to a few y'all in there. If you like this content, smash that like button. We're going to keep pumping out uh, a few more preview videos on the CDL front. I got a couple more things coming on in the next couple of weeks, especially after the beta is over. So stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, we will see you on the next one.